What a comeback by Las Vegas. Vegas. Fake by Minshew, and what a game for Devontae Adams. The Raiders picked up an emotional victory against the Baltimore Ravens, where nobody, absolutely nobody thought they were going to win this game. Head coach Antonio Pierce nearly in tears with an emotional hug to his general manager, Tom Telesco. This was absolutely crazy to see. And you can see Antonio Pierce right here, man. We remember when he upset the Chiefs on Christmas last year, he got a little emotional and choked up, and this was just as big of a victory against the Baltimore Ravens. But damn, Pierce is a big guy, a former linebacker, and I don't know if the GM Tom Telesco lights the fact that he kind of bear-hugged him and like almost cracked and hit his back. Check this shit out again. <laughs> That's a big ass hug. I'm sure Tom Telesco is going to have bruises on the back. Remember, Gardner Minshew upset the Baltimore Ravens last year when he was with the Indianapolis Colts. And it's so funny that we're seeing him do it again, this time in a Raiders uniform. The part I like about this end of the game celebration is you saw the head coach and the quarterback embrace each other. There was a lot of drama in this game and it was an ugly victory. Check this out right here. You could see that little handshake between the two. It was a rough clinic, and really, it seemed like the Raiders were going to just be competitive in this game, but at the end of the day, the Ravens were going to win it, but everything changed in the late third quarter. Keep in mind, not only did the rest of the NFL think that the Raiders have no shot in this game, I predicted that the Ravens were going to beat the Raiders. I was hoping, hey, the Raiders were going to be competitive, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I got to be realistic. I got to be logical. I'm picking the Ravens to win the game, and even during this game, Raiders fans were against the team against Gardner Minshew against the offense because like I mentioned earlier it was a rough start you saw some little memes here showing that as Gardner Minshew just Jimmy Garoppolo it was especially bad when Gardner Minshew had time in the pocket and threw a boneheaded interception once he did that it was seeming like oh shit the game's over however the entire game the Raiders defense kept the Ravens in check they were constantly holding them to field goals but you did see the Ravens have more big plays. They had big plays like this one with Lamar Jackson on the run, getting a big completion. And I thought the Raiders run defense was good most of the game. But then in the top of the third quarter, you started seeing Derrick Henry get going, make a big time run. And the Ravens eventually scored a touchdown. And that was another moment when it seemed like, damn, the offense shit the bed so much that now the Raiders defense is going to be tired and give up big plays. That's pretty much what happened last week against the LA Chargers. And the biggest dagger to the heart is whenever Gardner Minshew and the Raiders offensive line seemed like it got going a little bit. Keep in mind, Gardner Minshew was under duress this entire game. Gardner Minshew was actually sacked five times in this game. But once he started finding a rhythm and getting some completions and having a chance to score, there was this big play on fourth and two when the Raiders went for it. The Raiders went for it because last week Antonio Pierce had some moments when he did not go for it on fourth down, faced a lot of criticism. And so they went for it on fourth and two and they did a long pass to Devontae Adams and then Devontae Adams dropped it. That's when it started to get bad. It was like, damn. Just when Gardner Minshew gets going, now our best player on offense, Devontae Adams, he's not going. And there was a couple of times throughout this game when Devontae Adams was making big time plays, but at the same time, in a critical moment, he would have a drop. He not only had this drop here, but he had another one late in the game when he had an opportunity to score if he would have reeled that football in. I will say the first half struggles of the offense was not all entirely on Gardner Minshew. Yes, I know he had that boneheaded interception, but I thought for the most part, he did not have much to work with. And I did not like the play calling by the offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, in the first half of the game. And you had a lot of Raiders fans online being vocal about this. It was just too much run up the middle, run up the middle, third and one, run up the middle, boom, they're stopped short. A lot of that kept on happening. And you saw this moment right here in the first half of the game with Antonio Pierce staring down Luke Getze like, yo, yo, mother what are you going to start calling some good plays, bro? <laughs> Remember that interception I was just telling you about with Gardner Minshew? Well, check this out. Right after he threw the interception, I noticed this. A lot of people noticed this. I think this was really one of the biggest changes in the entire game. And you saw a switch flip right after this. Max Crosby 
goes up and Gardner Minshew throws an interception and he's kind of sad and he's just going to sort of walk to the sideline. You can see Max Crosby grab his hand, pull him over and say something to him. You see him poking him in the chest there. And it's like, he's saying something about you're the guy, you're the guy. We still believe in you. And this was a very emotional leader like moment for Max Crosby and Gardner Minshew in this game. Gardner Minshew has faced Tons of criticism in that quarterback competition with Aiden O'Connell throughout preseason and didn't perform well in preseason in terms of, you know, just most of the plays that we saw in particular against the Dallas Cowboys. But hey, Max Crosby was letting him know in this moment, we saw you just throw throw this pick. We still believe we could win the game. And I think after what we're about to talk about and what happened in the rest of this game, Gardner Minshew is hands down the starting quarterback for the Raiders. I think there's going to be absolutely no more Aiden O'Connell talk. Thank you. And he really, really, really proved a lot in the end of this game, staying strong, dealing with adversity. And one of the big things that I saw from Gardner Minshew in this game was his ability to move in the pocket. I think the guy throws even better on the run than when he's just sitting still in the pocket. He had an amazing arm on the run. One of the big things was Gardner Minshew getting the football to his tight end, Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers had an amazing game late in the third quarters when you saw them really click and pop off. Gardner Minshew buying some time with his legs like I was saying earlier and then boom getting this long huge completion to Brock Bowers near the goal line this helps set the comeback for the Raiders hurry up and grab Brock Bowers on your fantasy teams 125 yards 12 receptions in the first two games the most receiving yards in Raiders history among tight ends in their first two career games this guy's still a rookie he's gonna be on the Raiders team for about five years at minimum with that rookie contract I cannot wait to see what this guy does as he continues to develop. He is just getting started. But I gotta give Robert Spillane credit. I think Robert Spillane, under the radar, was the player of the game. And it wasn't just this interception. He made great plays in the run game as a linebacker. And even towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter, he batted a pass that Lamar Jackson attempted and almost would have gotten a first down if he would have completed it. Robert Spillane's extra effort helped the Raiders win it. You saw him get this interception against Lamar Jackson in the middle of the third quarter. And this is the interception that helped set up that big play where Brock Bowers got that completion and then you had the Alexander Madison touchdown. If it wasn't for this interception, the game is completely over. And this is not an ordinary interception. This is an extra effort, heads up interception. You saw Ja'Korian Bennett sort of break the ball up when it could have been a reception by Rashad Bateman. And then Roberts Blaine was alert and aware enough to go ahead, scoop that in, get a big time pick. And this completely changed the game. And look, Devontae Adams had those miscues earlier, but he made up for it by having, I think, the greatest catch of the year. Devontae Adams looked like a ballerina with the ability to balance like this on his tippy toes and keep his feet in. This was a huge catch that helped the Raiders come back. What was even funny is I thought this was obviously a catch when you see the replay, but John Harbaugh didn't think it was a catch. And John Harbaugh, the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, threw the challenge flag here. Think about it. He had this challenge that failed. He had an early challenge where he thought there was a completion to one of his wide receivers that failed you had two failed challenges by a so-called experienced head coach he looked like the rookie out there making boneheaded challenges and that lost his timeouts it actually ruined the Ravens ability to have a comeback because they had less timeouts due to these failed challenges Devontae Adams though making this amazing grab making up for the drop passes that happened earlier in the game And it was not just that tippy-toe pass, but you had Devontae Adams lined up one-on-one at times, and you got to take that opportunity if you're Gardner Minshew. I think teams are not going to do this in the future. They're not going to just let Devontae Adams go one-on-one with the defender because it's going to be a big completion every single time. Now that Minshew is slinging the rock, airing it out more, and the offensive line gave him some more time, that's a big thing. He was sacked five times, like I mentioned earlier, and the Raiders really had no run game throughout this game. A lot of people are joking around saying maybe the Raiders just should not run it at all in these games because they did better when they just started slinging it. But once that run game improves, things are really going to change for the Raiders because that's going to buy Gardner Minshew more time, allow him to do play action so he can actually set up some of these big throws to Devontae Adams. Now, Ravens fans are salty about this game. They believe that it was rigged by the referees, apparently. Apparently, they think that the refs rig games for the Raiders. I don't know when the hell that ever happens, but, you know, Devontae Adams was able to draw a penalty here. Uh, Some people are critical of it, saying they don't think it was a PI. This really helps set up 
the Raiders to get a big touchdown to tie the game. But I think the defender was holding Devonte Adams. He was preventing his ability to catch the football. I think this was PI at the very least defensive holding, but some Ravens fans are complaining saying, Oh, they both were grabbing onto each other. I don't know, but Ravens fans are really sad because they looked really cocky going into this game. And you saw some of their fans act absolutely ghost faced and upset towards the end of the fourth quarter when they knew they were going to lose this game. And I also felt like the Ravens coaching staff and their players in the beginning of the game were really conservative and just thought they had this in the bag. And I think it led to their demise and they had an incredibly slow start, just like the Raiders. I mean, only nine points well into the first half of the game. And there's been all these rumors about Devontae Adams leaving. Look, I've even been buying into the rumors. It seems like a likely possibility if the Raiders were going to have a bad season, but this is all completely changed. The Raiders are in it and are a playoff contender now after beating the Baltimore Ravens. You got to give them credit. It was an ugly game, but they still won it at the end of the day. And Devontae Adams seems He's pretty happy. I don't think he's going nowhere anymore. What's going on, league? World, Raider Nation, man. We out here, Baltimore. Got the dub, big dub. World counted us out. We made it happen, baby. Shout out to the, all the fans out there. Shout out to Raider Nation, man. Love y'all. If you can go to Baltimore in an early morning game, after you just had an ugly loss against the Chargers where you lost by two possessions and still pull off the victory while you're trailing in the fourth quarter, by the way, this is a historic game, a historic comeback for the Raiders. Last time the Raiders won a game in which they trailed 10 points in the fourth quarter was against the Saints in 2016, down 24 to 13. So it's been a long time, I think roughly 49 games since the Raiders made this kind of comeback. If you could do that, if you could do that against the Baltimore Ravens, when you're on the road, you could beat anybody. You could beat anybody this year, and the Raiders should be mentioned in the playoff contention. The reason why the Raiders will be in every game is because of their defense. Their defense absolutely clamped Lamar Jackson. He looked pissed off and frustrated, especially late in the fourth quarter when Max Crosby had this amazing sack, and this really prevented a Ravens comeback. A lot of people thought the Ravens were going to come back and eventually win it after the Raiders tied the game with four minutes to go, but because of their defense, it seems like anything is possible, and we just been waiting for this Raiders offense to catch up. It's a new offensive coordinator, new quarterback. It's going to take time, but it seems like they finally clicked late in this game. And I think the big difference is that even if they only scored a field goal, they at least sustained a drive to allow this defense to rest because they look gas for a little bit in the third quarter. Lamar Jackson was very upset after this game. We're going to see, you know, um, I'm definitely going to talk to my guys though, because we got to find, find, our mojo, you know, we got to find and, and do what we do because that's that's not us at all. The Ravens are doing historically bad. This is the first time the Ravens have started 0-2 since 2015. It was also the 2015 Raiders who brought them to 0-2. What a really good observation here by Derek Evans. So Lamar Jackson is definitely struggling. And one thing that I noticed, and this was the very end of the game when Lamar Jackson started lateraling the football, it seemed like he actually had an opportunity to score a touchdown. And even the announcer brought it up on the broadcast. Why did Lamar not just run forward? But he panicked because I feel like the Raiders defense got into his head the entire day and ended up lateraling it. And obviously the Raiders got the victory at the very end. And as that play concluded, it was great to see the team get so emotional. They heard all the noise, even the noise coming from their own fans, even coming from people like me. And I will be somebody I always admit what I say. And I did not believe at all whatsoever that the Raiders were going to win this game. I was hoping they were going to make it competitive, at least show some progress on offense. I did give Gardner Minshew some compliments from that last game against the Chargers, and I thought some of Pierce's coaching decisions actually led to the demise of the Raiders against the Chargers. But against the Ravens, Antonio Pierce stayed aggressive, went for it on fourth down. Even though it didn't work, I still like the decision, and he got involved in his team. We showed him, you know, get into Luke Getze's ear, obviously him having some emotional interactions with Gardner Minshew. And it seemed like Pierce, rather than sort of laying back and letting his assistants make these decisions for him like he did against the Chargers, and said it seemed like he was more deliberate, proactive, and intervened a lot in this game. Vegas Sports Today, make sure you guys check them out. I think they have some of the best recordings inside the locker room sometimes, but they got this quick clip of Max Crosby saying he took it personal when people were critical of him. Remember, Joe Alt had a really good game against Max Crosby in the second half. Granted, the Chargers were getting the football out of their hands pretty quickly, but that was the story from the game, and it must have ticked Max Crosby off. You know, we heard a lot of noise, and... I know personally, I like, 
It took a lot of things personal. I feel like I had a lot of doubters. I feel like this whole team was being disrespected. So um, you got to respond. So we just got to keep doing it, keep stacking days. And-, and look, if this is what the Raiders need in order to beat the Baltimore Ravens, then let's start talking shit. Let's talk shit on the team all the time if that's what's going to propel them and help them get these types of victories. Gardner Minshew was also asked about the doubters on the ground right after the victory. Oh, uh, man, I don't care what they doubt. We believe it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to continue to get better. We got the right people to do it. Not the right players, the right people to do it. As long as we got that, we're going to be all right. Obviously, the defense is the story of the day. Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers, but really Gardner Minshew. I feel like he's taken the most heat in addition to offensive coordinator Luke Getze. These guys really came together and helped put this game away. I think Minshew should be respected as the Raiders' starting quarterback for the rest of the season after this victory. I don't think that the fans should be talking about who we're going to draft next year. I don't think the fans should be talking about potentially Aiden O'Connell. Is he you know, the answer? Could he help coming off the bench? I think Minshew solidified himself as a Raiders starting quarterback. And this was great to see because on the other hand, you got Derek Carr balling out there with the New Orleans Saints and it felt like, damn, what if the Raiders had a quarterback? Could things be different? And I think Minshew showed, you know, he's not going to exactly light up the stat sheet. Honestly, he didn't have horrible stats. He had better stats than Lamar Jackson. And one thing that I thought was notable was the uh, completion percentage. He had almost 80% completion percentage. But he's not going to light up the stat sheet entirely, not going to have multiple touchdowns. But he showed grit, made some great plays, stuck in there, didn't get discouraged. Maybe part of that was the pep talk from Max Crosby. And ultimately made the big throws they needed at the end of the game to set them up for that game-winning field goal by Daniel Carlson. I think this guy is going to have a great game against the Carolina Panthers coming up next the Raiders first home game and I also think that the Raiders could keep this momentum going and end up with a and, and end up with a really solid winning record Panthers game at home that's a dub the Cleveland Browns are getting better they're decent and defense but I think the Raiders get the dub still at home then you got the disaster Denver Broncos Raiders can get a dub there and then you got the Pittsburgh Steelers who I think present a better challenge than all those teams these are the next four games of the Raiders I could easily see them going four and oh here especially after this win against the Ravens and then the Raiders are five and one well, we've been talking about hey could there be a Raiders versus Saints Super Bowl with how both of these teams are looking I think it could happen and I want to see it happen for sure by the end of the year let me know your thoughts in the comments below how far can the Raiders go this year my name is Wi-Fi Willie subscribe for more NFL content for me peace out and hope you have a good one